Hey guys, David here and welcome to the FitPro Daily. This week is all about finding clients and specifically if you're just starting in the fitness industry or you want to transition to face-to-face -face or online or boot camp, we're going to look at different strategies and ways that you can start generating leads for a new business or setup you're just about to start off with. To start the week off, we've got a massive guest interview coming your way. We've got Gemma Quinnell and she's going to talk about how to succeed at, in interviews, plus how to start finding your initial couple of clients to start your fitness business off. But before we do dive into today's guest interview, if you haven't already subscribed, make sure you do click that big red button below to subscribe. That way you'll never miss any future episodes. Anyway, let's dive straight into today's guest interview. So welcome, Gemma. Hi. <laughs> I think there's a little time delay in what we're talking <laughs> about, so people just have I to think, bear with us. Yeah, that. maybe, yeah. <laughs> so we start every every week off by finding out how the person that came on got started in the fitness industry. So how did you get started in the fitness industry? Yeah, uh, actually, my background was in dance, so that's kind of what led me into fitness. It kind of naturally natural like a sideways progression I suppose yeah. so I've been uh, dancing a lot I'd come back to the UK um, and then was looking for some some work to do then um, and I found something at the time called Zumba which no one at when I was doing it like 12 years ago was really doing um, so that's that was kind of my introduction into fitness so from there I went into group exercise and then um, after that into personal training pilates and and various other um things wow okay and that was all in the uk but from what i gather now you're not in the yes. uk anymore right that's right i'm now living in dubai um teaching uh fitness over here as well um and the story about how that came about um so um if we go back to the uk when i was uh delivering um group exercise and personal training I was also um, I then was invited to become a lecturer for um, training courses um, and then because of that I guess my kind of name was around in in the kind of Kent area where I was uh, from and someone had a company in Dubai um, it was a UK company but they had a branch in Dubai uh, looking for a tutor and they they contacted me basically to go out there and start teaching for them and that's how I initially got into Dubai um, the first time yeah wow yeah it's, and that is the thing and a lot of people don't I don't know they're just too scared to put themselves out there like you say you're posting mm -hmm. you're doing good you're really helping clients and you just becoming well known and then from that small thing like your life's completely changed and you're living in a completely different new country yeah yeah absolutely it was it was about really kind of getting myself known and when I first started in in the industry I guess it's important I guess I tell this story a lot to uh, my other students is when I first certified as a trainer I went to every single gym to try to get hired um, but that I was being told I didn't have enough experience so like I'm going to talk about today I kind of did what I did um, and then within like a few months people had thought I'd been around for a lot longer than I had so it was about positioning myself as somebody that had um, give, like, been around for a while. Um, they believed that and then that's kind of it, how it all led on to, to, to other things. It's, it's going to be quite an interesting chat today from just the way you're building out so far. So talk about where you are now in Dubai then. So you're uh, helping people get qualified as PTs and you have your own fitness business as well, do you? Yes, correct. So um, uh, my now um, where it stands is I help people qualify as personal trainers and group exercise instructors yeah. um, here in, in Dubai and the UAE. Um, and we actually have branches now all, all over the world, which is great doing that same thing. Um, that's my company. And then on top of that, uh, yes, I deliver um, uh, training sessions like group exercise sessions for um, different gyms or like community classes or schools um, and also do on like online training as well so I'm kind of doing both parts and now mainly my team I have a team that um, 
deliver the training courses for me. Um, so initially I was there present doing most of the, the work and now I've trained up a team so that I can continue to deliver, do my own kind of classes as well. Wow, yeah. so you, you're quite the inspiration for most people listening to this and knowing <laughs> you can kind of go from complete beginner, just mm. a couple of months, you build up a good reputation yeah. and then now you, you say your company's worldwide, did you say teaching teaching the personal training qualification? Yes, so we, yeah, exactly. We are now, I mean, uh, yeah, we're now in the UAE, but we've got now like partner companies working in India, Europe, um, like, um, f- like Philippines. So um like delivering the qualifications under the kind of standards that that we are we're doing um to try and reach uh like a bigger target market because especially in dubai it's a lot of different cultures over here so um people want to be able to work worldwide or go back to their own countries so people have gone back and now they want to be able to um help other people get certified as well um yeah Great. Okay. So uh, somebody's just got qualified. They maybe done your course or they've done mm-hmm. a another course. Mm-hmm. What is it, what are like the first things they really need to do once they've got that piece of paper in their hand to say now they can legally uh, help people? Yeah, uh, my kind of advice for that is to try to really go out as quickly as you can and um, kind of use that certification that you've got on the knowledge that you've got, because there's a tendency that if you kind of sit on it and leave it for a long time, I guess it's like driving, you can pass your driving test. And then if you don't drive a car for two or three years, um, not that you forget, but you probably aren't as great when you start again um, as soon as you if you can kind of go out and try to do as much as you can with that certificate even if it's um, finding like friends or family initially to start with to just practice what you've you've learned if you're a complete beginner um, that would be really helpful just to keep your confidence up really um, and to, to help you um, for the future. Okay, so you mean once you get qualified, go and find some cl- family or friends to use that qualification to practice using the new skills that they've learnt? Yes, yeah, so either either start applying like applying for jobs, which I guess we'll talk about, or um, but or if you you can't get a job or like you're struggling initially because especially in the current situation, um, you can't just necessarily get a job like tonight. Um, there's normally a process that you have to go through. Um, definitely in that interim period you should still be um, working with somebody friends or relatives to maintain what you've learned so you don't forget really okay so they've maybe they're helping their aunts and all these type of things they've got like listed up but like you said how does somebody go and find a job is it as easy as walking up to pure gym and just saying i've got my qualification do you have any availabilities uh actually in my experience, it can be. As I mentioned at the beginning, when I first went round, I was kind of rejected. That was because I wasn't known. Um, but when I've had my students, certainly in the UK, um, literally it has been a case of um, handing like CVs to the gym and then getting hired. But um, I guess the key thing to this is having uh, like a network of people that uh, if you don't, if you're kind of not well known yet, making sure that you're connected with people that um, do that are well connected. Connections are really important because, for example, if I hand my student CV to Pure Gym, or certainly as I did a few years back when they they were qualifying with me, they would like 100% of them would always get phone calls to be interviewed, and uh, I would be kind of explaining how great and amazing these trainers are, um, and that kind of that really helped them through the door. If they just did it on them by themselves, it became more difficult. Um, and I'll give one example. I had one student who's actually was visually impaired, so like registered blind, uh, but was very good trainer but he needs some kind of adaptation sometimes so the moment he would give a cv in yeah people really wouldn't look past that uh but as soon as i put it in then yeah it kind of changed and and he was invited to interview and was given the the chance to prove himself so um i guess the initial stages is to 
network closely with other people working in your community get to know the trainers that are in maybe the gym that you want to work at if it's pure gym get to know them they'll know if there's a vacancy coming up um if like you're on good terms with them they can definitely kind of get your cv further up the pile because often you know the managers are going to get sent hundreds of cvs so they're not going to read every single one of them but they'll they will read the ones where there's kind of recommendation behind them so um that's kind of one thing that i would say in terms of looking for a job is to really utilize your network um yeah that's that's yeah that's the important thing if you're applying uh, applying around um and I guess my other kind of tips for that as well is to really think about where you're applying applying to and what that particular club is offering. So again, for example, if we look at a club like Nuffield Health um, in the UK, um, which I've worked with, they were very much into, I guess, um, like overall health maybe they were very big promoters of things like mental health conditions I was doing a project with them with for people with like medical um, conditions that was kind of where they were geared towards as opposed to somewhere like pure gym or the gym group which is more like a commercial for the like budget gym uh, they will attract a different type of clientele so when you're presenting your CV it's to wherever you're sending it to it's important you kind of tweak your cv to to appeal to the person that's recruiting you need to do some research into the company um so for example if i was applying to nuffield health like now i would really focus along the work i've done with medical referrals or what knowledge i've had or how i really want to help um people with particular medical conditions in in that in that way if I was applying to pure gym or uh, the gym group maybe I would focus it more on transformations that I've done with clients um that's another kind of tip that I would give yeah I, I can definitely agree with that so currently we're looking for a, a full-time Facebook ads person to come and work with us at fit pro legion and we're getting inundated with CVs but and then we're reading them it's like wow this they're the the same cvs but also they haven't even tweaked them to make it sound like they want this job we were reading mm -hmm. one the person was telling us about all the film filming businesses she's worked with and she's worked mm. with the bbc and itv and nothing mentioned social media or facebook yeah. ads and you instantly think this why is this person even applied when their cv yeah. doesn't represent the same thing yeah Yes. So I think it's important to kind of show the company as well that you're you're particularly interested in what advantages you have. If you're from that same area, that can also be a good um, a good selling point because, you know, the local communities. So all of these kind of things. Um, yeah, you do need to you have a template CV, but you do need to tweak it and, um, for specific job opportunities. Okay. So we found a gym. We've maybe been talking to uh a few trainers and they say yeah come and come and bring your cv in do you just take a cv or do you take some sort of brochure or do you take a, a bottle of wine to try and bribe your way in is there <laughs> a few yeah. is this something you take to make yourself stand out more yeah i mean again i guess it depends on um who is like recruiting if it's the direct manager or if it's like somebody from he head office um and if you have any insight again this is why network is kind of really important um if other trainers have already got that job they can tell you maybe what they did which uh, which maybe there might be some similarity that can really help um, but generally speaking what I've found in general is apart from taking for a particular client for like eight or 12 weeks something like that that's kind of the the scenario that the the um the students go through and that can be really important because i've had students take basically the case study that they've worked on the client that they've worked on they've got like how they've worked through all the programs that they did maybe some before and after pictures everything that they've done with that that can also um 
just give you an edge over maybe some other you know everyone's probably going to do this now but it can give you a um an edge over other trainers it's like real evidence that you've done something and also that you are tracking it it's not you're, you're not just remembering everything in your head or or just kind of selling yourself you you've got hard evidence so um that's one thing i've noticed the my guys that have done that they are a lot more successful than the ones that don't do that yeah it, it just shows you've got a track record like you say of um mm. work that you've done previously so you've got these massive commercial gyms and then you've got let's say my gym or your gym the local uh mm -hmm. not massive names just a local independent gym is there much of a difference when going to work for either um i mean again it can it can uh it can vary but generally speaking um obviously i don't know every single local gym or how they operate but generally speaking with the big commercial gyms i'm talking like true gym pure gym gym group those, those kind of ones maybe the budget gyms as well um and that were also for maybe some of the other like other what better known um kind of chains uh, a lot of the trainers are working there as almost like like self-employed really not al not almost self-employed but actually a self-employed so um you would be um basically you're going to be earning based on the number of maybe sessions that you're conducting certainly that's how it was before um like the whole lockdown thing i know the gyms are just reopening and everything the last few months so uh, things obviously are always changing and evolving in the fitness industry but certainly that was kind of the, the method of, of working compared to what I know certainly my area with like local gyms um, the the trainers are paid a set salary like minimum wage or above minimum wage whatever it is and they're paid a set salary for um, regardless of how many sessions they're they're kind of taking so um, I guess it's the incentives are different um and therefore when you're in these particular gyms you need to kind of bear that in mind because if you're working for a gym where um, it's very sales focused that you're going to earn more by the more kind of um, um sessions that you do it's important that you prove to the gym that you can actually sell you might not be making money but still they've they've kind of got to have they've got to have you in that gym if you're not like productive then they're not going to want to keep you um alternatively if you're in somewhere where um you're being paid a specific wage maybe a set salary then usually they're looking for people that are really um not that the sales isn't important but it's more um customer or service orientated in that sense so it, it the i guess the emphasis needs to be on the service that you can deliver um a really excellent service um regardless that you might not be paid any extra for doing that so um yeah they would be my tips and and yeah it, it can vary between gym to gym um on how yeah they actually operate their their training systems that's 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 exactly how we have it in our place so we have a 40 hour a week contract that is it it's 40 hours a week there could be 20 sessions there could be 10 sessions you need to be here for the full 40 hours but like you say most of our stuff then maybe there might only be 20 sessions a week but you might have 10 hours of admin of client care of mm -hmm. facebook messages of all the stuff that keeps them on board compared to like you say the big commercial gyms where um you get paid for the number of sessions you actually do do yes Okay, so um, what is the best route for somebody new then? Should they go self-employed straight away or should they potentially work for somebody else and build up that knowledge or does it not really matter? Yeah, I mean, there's always a great debate on this. And I, I mean, from my, my own kind of experiences, I'm very much for kind of going self-employed straight away but that's my experiences that's how I've built my business I know there's a lot of people that say go work for a gym and get experience and then go self-employed and I think it really where you want to kind of head with your your career at particular stages in that career so for example with me I never had any kind of ambition to become like a manager of a gym or a, like some kind of supervisor that was never my intention so um, working on my own 
actually was also I kind of was forced into it as well because um, I needed to gain experience so the best way for me to do that was to set up on my own and kind of get out there and get the experience um, but if you're you know if you're maybe wanting to be someone that at some point um, is like a manager of someone like David Lloyd or Pure Gym uh, we've mentioned these clubs then yeah it's a good idea to start in these clubs because you need to understand actually how they work um, but ultimately as well again if you're working for for one of these commercial clubs where if both um but i think definitely i don't think people should think that they have to necessarily work in a gym to get the experience first certainly i de i didn't do it that way um and yeah i neither did my team and we we all we, we all turned out okay at the end of that so um i think it's a personal preference but i don't think there's any need to work in a gym necessarily first of all OK, just from your knowledge as well, we're going to talk about interviews next. Is there a difference mm -hmm. in the interview before we talk about interview techniques and stuff? Is there a difference in the interview when you go for a self-employed interview compared to an employed? Because we I've only ever done employed for staff for us. Yeah. Is there a big difference yeah. in that type of interview? I would I guess I guess there kind of is so if you're being employed by um, a, a specific company and certainly I'm thinking of times when I've done um, like initially when I've done interviews and what I see from my students going for interviews now um, very much as a, it kind of comes back to knowing about the company knowing what they're going to try and expect for you to be able to to bring so again if it's a company that is maybe going into people's homes and delivering training you might be employed by them um you need to really portray that skill set to them quite often what i've seen and i'm talking again about dubai specifically now um when they're going for interviews they normally have some kind of practical element to the interview certainly i've had that as well when i've been recruited as, as a tutor um that they might ask you to do some kind of um, presentation or talk through a case study or show a program in the gym and tra train somebody that's quite often when you're being employed if you're working more as a self-employed person, um, again, uh, it, I mean, it can vary, I suppose. But uh, generally speaking, when I've got, gone for uh, as a self-employed person, one, I'm mainly uh, marketing towards my clients. So my clients are kind of going to be the people making the decision if they're going to hire me. Um, if I'm going to go to a gym and like uh, work like as a freelancer in a gym, then quite often and they're going to take you based on again reputation or um like um evidence that you've actually got some kind of track record that you you're going to bring a good reputation um, and not bring the reputation of the particular gym down so i think there is a difference um yeah oh i i because obviously i've not ever had to go into a commercial i've never had never thought about that bringing a reputation down it's quite, it's quite an interesting one that okay so let's dive into some interview tips uh is the interview tips that cover both aspects do you reckon or is is the interview tips that they both kind of separate um i think there's yeah interview tips in general i guess uh yeah they're, they're, they're kind of general interview tips and then i suppose it depends who's recruiting and how they're going to carry out the interview to you know which ones you might need to use but i think it's good to be kind of prepared for you know all scenarios really yeah yeah so what what kind um, of so yeah no you go for it what type of interview tips would you give somebody then okay so uh, again um start off by making sure when you go in that you're really focused on what the company does what the club does because sometimes trainers will go in and start talking about um all the you know bodybuilding comp competitors that they've trained for example but actually the type of clientele they're doing might be athletes so it's 
it's kind of it's experience it's not really relevant experience in that in in that particular case um so just understand the company and kind of what they are um looking for um i think at the interview um you need to dress or um as if you are going to um be asked to perform something in the gym as well uh, I know sometimes there's a big debate about should we wear a suit and tie uh, but ultimately when you're on the gym floor you're not going to be in a suit and tie so you kind of need to be smart but you be able to go into the gym even if you need to just maybe change a shirt a t-shirt or something but at least be prepared to be able to go into the gym at any point um, it's also good practice sometimes people apply for jobs like from the internet or maybe they've heard from somebody else but if there's a job going that you're applying and you can see it also advertised on the internet maybe like pure gym maybe they're advertising and you can see it on like a website like indeed for example they have um like roles and responsibilities it will say if you're employed by this company or you're recruited you need to be able to do xyz like work flexible hours manage a team something like that so you need to go through all of the points that they are saying that you're going to be responsible for or what they're expecting the candidate to have and just prepare in advance situations when you've actually um, maybe done those things so uh, an example of when you've led a team an example of when you've maybe had to work flexible hours or if they're expecting you to work flexible hours it needs to come across that you're able to kind of commit to that um, because these are going to be probably the start of the questions they're going to ask you in the interview they're on there for a reason and it's they're there to kind of filter out that are not going to be a good match for the company um even if they're amazing trainers they, they're not going to get hired um so think of those examples because in interviews people get really nervous so if you've prepared them in advance it's easier and also think about experiences of training clients and again if you've not trained many and you've only trained like your brother or your sister or something when you're in the interview instead of referring to them as your brother you just refer to them as my client um, and you think of all the experiences you went through with your you know your brother what did he struggle with um like what did you need to motivate him more on um and that will help you to answer some of the questions because usually in interviews they will ask you to um, report back on times when you've had to do certain activities like um, when have you had to deal with a client that um, like got angry because they didn't achieve their their goal in time what did you what did you you do when someone wanted to have a transformation in one week and and it couldn't be done all of the, like these kind of questions can can come up um, so it's about relaying experiences so the more kind of you've thought about it before you go to the interview the better um and then i guess the other thing that's coming up and it's coming up a lot in dubai i'm not sure if they're still doing this in the in the uk but it's certainly coming up over here is um that um people forget from their courses things like the anatomy that people study and it kind of it kind of goes out their head if they've it's been a while since they've studied so actually this is where people that are fresh into the industry tend to have an advantage because it's usually fresher in their head um what they've suddenly studied but i we have known them here it's very common for them to give them some small theoretical exam as well um on the nutrition or anatomy to make sure that the um the trainer actually understands where you know certain muscles or how certain exercises work so uh, and also hormones is coming up a lot here that they will um ask a lot on like effects of different hormones and how it can affect the body so that's what i advise my clients out here to brush up on that for specific companies i know they're going to ask it because uh, we've got trainers in there and they've they've all been asked it so we it's a common theme um that they need to kind of brush up on those particular topics before the interview because um that there's probably going to be some question about it um in the interview process i've got to agree with you that that is something we would tend to do we wouldn't give them an exam uh, mm. we would just question provide or ask questions that we obviously will know if they know the answers or not yeah. 
with yeah. specifically with exercises or clients yeah. to know what the experience is like if a client comes in crying or a client breaks down during a session or yeah. they come in and they say their 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 back's really hurting from the previous session so we can quiz them yeah and that'll give us the yes best answers, yeah yeah and i think as well on that as well some quite often i mean it's not like i mean there are right answers for some things that are kind of correct answers but um when they're talking about clients really and it's the same when i'm teaching of course we're looking at how you would handle in specific circumstances so i remember once i had one lady we were doing like a children's fitness course and the child wanted to go to the toilet and she kind of just broke down and didn't really know what to do in that circumstance um really there was a lot of things that she could have done and it would have been it, that would have been acceptable but they we really they're really just looking that you understand like your I guess your limits and how you can uh bring in clients with um like some kind of problem and how you how you're going to deal in that situation and you're not you know you're not going to panic um so that's the kind of thing to remember just kind of be confident in your answers as well yeah definitely say that but and before you answer anything take a deep breath give mm. yourself a couple of seconds even it might it might seem like minutes but just that extra yeah. second to think about what you're about to say because otherwise we just rush the answer you just come out with all kinds of crazy stuff yes like, oh, yeah say that. <laughs> exactly <laughs> okay so let's move forward then somebody's just qualified they've been applying for all these jobs maybe they've had a couple of interviews and nothing seems to be going their way mm. they're starting to run out of money maybe then their, their part-time job isn't covering enough of their bills how did they go about finding a first couple of semi-private clients out and about then outside of a typical gym yeah I think the most important thing to kind of um, realize and I, I a lot of people kind of forget this it's like they get certified and then they think that suddenly like hundreds of people are going to want to train with them or you know or something like that it kind of doesn't work that way because there's a lot of trainers all the time like coming through even people that are not certified that are you know working out in gyms um, and it's about I guess giving some kind of value to people wanting to actually work with you yeah. so um it's not like an overnight thing ne like necessarily like you can say something today and tomorrow you're going to get a client it's going to take a couple of weeks when I started again I gave myself a whole month of like advertising solidly for a whole month um to try to pull in my um first set of clients i actually got i was doing group exercise i got 50 clients which was really good um i wasn't expecting anywhere near that amount um and kind of that is that was kind of an exception to the rule um where i got so many clients kind of quite quickly um but I also had the Zumba brand behind me. But if you're kind of going, especially um, like PT or going for small um, small groups, then again, it's important. Social media now, I mean, that really wasn't around like when I was there like 12 years ago. The advertising was different. Um, but social media, as you'll know, is really important um, to just be seen on social media and that people know that you're like a trainer. It's also um, important to show what you can do with kind of clients. So again, before you're getting these paying clients, even if you can get some kind of like buddy or someone that's even not paying you to start with just to kind of get these like um, almost like testimonials or for you to practice on um, is really good as well because if, if people can see what you've done to other clients it helps um, people relate a lot more like to 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 real life as well so for example if you're a really muscly guy and you've got lots of pictures of you being really muscly that might be great but as a female that could be quite intimidating I might not want to work with that particular type of client so get yourself known uh, by posting a lot out on on social media get really clear with the kind of clients that you're trying to aim at if you're aiming for females you need to kind of market towards females like the pictures the words in um, all of that kind of thing needs to be geared towards that particular type of market um, and just be kind of seen at as many fitness things that you can be I know right now is quite tough because of the situation but sometimes there's like um, 
festivals where you know you can do some kind of demonstration like like, have like a boot camp thing going on with some some clients to get yourself known you might not be paid for it but it just again it just gets your your name out there that you're active in that area and definitely network because as I say that's kind of really what's kind of got me to what I did and and kind of really helps with my students is that we networking with um with good contacts people in the area people that you can kind of learn from um and work alongside that can really help as well um and then I would say it's going to take probably it's going to take a few weeks three or four weeks before you may get a client so again it comes back to starting as early as you can the quicker you start the quicker you're going to get your first client yeah definitely a few things you said there and the social definitely one thing would be cleaning up your social media if you had a very interesting previous social media account then maybe it might be worth creating a new social media account just for your personal mm-hmm. training uh, uh yes. career almost yeah yeah so yeah that's important to kind of remember as well because obviously if you're using like facebook um and um you know actually some people are not even on social media at all um for for various reasons but really in this kind of um uh, career choice that social media is very important for for businesses really um and yeah as you say if you've got lots of pictures of you maybe not living the healthiest lifestyle previously on your facebook or you know some i don't know random words and stuff spread all over it then it, that's not kind of the thing that you you maybe want clients to to, to read about you so yeah definitely um start a new one and then you've mentioned network as well like it's so mm. key and people forget that their auntie, their uncles, their brothers, their sisters also have two or three hundred friends on Facebook as well. So all it yeah. needs to be is a message to Auntie Sally telling her that you're launching this new service. And she might say, yeah. oh, I was talking to my good friend, Barbara, who was also yeah. interested in losing weight. Why don't I send you her details? And it, it literally can start like that. Yeah. Yeah, it absolutely does. And and I mean, and I'm, I'm kind of, I mean, I'm not surprised now, but I mean, it's like years later and I'm like 10 years ago and I'm getting messages from someone that I kind of dealt with 10 years ago that has kind of heard about me through like through a friend so again it goes kind of goes down to um, recommendations and people just knowing that you're active and and knowing that you're around because uh, I mean like you say you might have your your aunt's friend might be just the kind of client that you can really help but if they don't know that you can help them then they're not going to train with you they're going to go and pay another trainer so you may as well you know take that person and really do a good job with them then them to go to someone else simply because they didn't know that you were you were doing what you were doing yeah and what you said there i think that's another key point as well about uh keeping strong relationships or even if you're not if you don't particularly like the person make sure you always finish a relationship off in a positive note because you never know when that person may be able to come back and help you uh in another positive way yes it is and i mean it's kind of i suppose it it's a weird it's a weird industry and in the fact that it's like people are always kind of competing against each other like they've got more clients i want more clients whatever it is but actually what i found when you work with people uh, you let the let other trainers do what they need to do you do what you need to do actually it gets you a lot farther um and certainly i i when i was back in the uk training i would kind of be working with what you might consider to be my top competitors but we were actually working really well together and referring to each other when maybe they were better or dealing with a particular clientele more than i was Um, i guess when people start out as well they are really they want to take every client that they can get so they could be pregnant, uh, bodybuilder, fat loss, whatever. They they just want to take every client because uh, they don't have many clients. They want money and they don't have much experience. Um, and then I guess as you get further into it, you kind of realize that you don't need to take every client and you actually shouldn't take every client because not everyone is maybe right for you. And you can actually do a much better job if you only focus on the real people that can help and the real people that are actually going to pay you for for what you're doing not like 
clients that want something for free all the time um that that also um is important oh i i couldn't agree more with that fact that you could take somebody on and they are paying you less than what everyone else is paying you but they're mm-hmm. demanding more of your time that always on your case they're late at paying it's just a nightmare client and you have to remember you you don't have to work with them you can say no to people you don't have to accept everybody that comes your way and I think also by doing that it kind of puts like it makes it more of a like a unique opportunity to be able to work with that person which can actually push your value as a trainer up and also people can respect you more when you refer clients so I, I used to refer a lot of like pregnant clients even though I, I am certified to train pre and postnatal clients it's not a particular area I enjoy or yeah. and I, I kind of I've got other clients to focus on so I would refer them to somebody else but I never kind of lost a client from that. They would go do their thing where they needed to. Then as soon as they were ready, they would kind of come back. They would refer their friends to me. So it actually, it was a good thing that I was referring like the wrong client to other people because um, it meant that I could give all my clients a, a much better service. Perfect. Okay, so to finish off then, is there any final tips on uh, finding gyms, finding jobs, interview tips or finding clients that you could give to somebody brand new into the industry now to finish? Yeah, I guess if you're brand new, and I suppose what I did, and we didn't have social media then, but I kind of do this now, and I would still do it um, if I was to start again, um, kind of look for maybe someone that is in the position that you want to be in, maybe a local trainer, or uh, like a manager at a gym, some like the person that you're kind of aspiring to be similar to, have a look at the people that they're maybe following on the social media, and try to kind of build connections with them. If they're doing kind of um, any kind of workshop or you get to train with them as well, that can be an added bonus. And also utilize um, things like LinkedIn as well can be really important for um, job opportunities. I know trainers that have been, um, I mean, I get offers through LinkedIn just from like me being present. And I know lots of trainers that have had the same thing happen. So, So I guess it's, look at who the people you aspire to be are networking with and look at what they're doing and try to be try to basically replicate what they're doing be in the same places as them meet with the same people that they're meeting and try to kind of um get a similar following to what they have that's really how your name will start to get around and how people will start to know um that you're involved in fitness in the first place yeah and definitely with that stop dwelling stop procrastinating go uh-huh. and go and do everything we've literally been talking about for the past 40 minutes yeah 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 and definitely just yeah exactly just get on and do it the worst thing you can actually do is think about doing it it's the same we have with the the, the courses do you think about doing it just do it um and the success rate definitely 100 percent. i i can say those that go and do it and do it straight away they're they're fine the ones that think about it for a long time probably never get it done because they just drag their heels (laughs) perfect cheers Gemma so people who are listening to this uh maybe they're not qualified yet and they want to know more about the qualifications or maybe they really like what you're talking about about finding uh, uh potential interviews or interview techniques or finding clients how can people find out and learn a little bit more about what it is you do and maybe some of your services Sure. Um, I mean, I guess you can kind of look me up on social social media. Um, or on Inst- Normally, Instagram is the one I'm most active on at the moment or um, Facebook um, under Gemma Quinnell. Um, yeah, no one can spell my name, but hey, that's my, my name. G-E-M-M-A-Q-U-I-N-N-E-L-L. Um, I think I'm the only one in so you should get me hopefully um yeah you can drop me a message and i'm always happy to discuss and um also explain to people the best routes to to get into what they want to do because also i guess we live in a world where you can get so much information that people kind of get a bit confused over what actually is the next step they should be taking so yeah you can drop me a message and i gladly talk you through your kind of options bit depending where you're located and um 
to get you to where you want to be. Perfect. Thank you. So that was the guest interview with Gemma and you can see how experienced she is and how she properly took it from going from nothing to this super successful business that she has now in Dubai. And it was all about just going out there, getting what needs to get done, done, and then moving forward, taking advantage of every single opportunity that comes your way and just being always out there trying to help people, trying to give what you can do best and you will in return get the success that you need. If you love that interview, make sure you do leave a comment below or like the video. And also, if you want to reach out to Gemma, feel free. Again, if you haven't already subscribed to the channel, make sure you do subscribe. That way you can always go back and check these videos and you can see any new videos we have coming your way. I'll speak to you all tomorrow. Cheers.